In the midst of current events in our country, in our community, and worldwide, it is incumbent on the church, particularly the ELCA Lutheran Church, which is predominantly white, to confess the sin of racism and to condemn racist rhetoric and the ideology of white supremacy. I invite you to join me in this prayer of repentance. Save us, O God, from ourselves, from racism often cloaked in pious words, from the machinations of white supremacy hidden in calls for civility, from microaggressions thinly veiled in arrogance, from apologies when they don't give way to action, from forgiveness without facing the truth, from reconciliation without reparation. Deliver us, O oh God, from expecting siblings of color to continue to bear this emotional work, which is not theirs to do. Grateful for the long arc that bends toward justice, we pray, grant us wisdom, give us courage for the facing of these days, and by the power of the Spirit, all for the sake of the kingdom that we share in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory that he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis, chapter 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together God called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. 
And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in the divine image. In the image of God, humankind was created. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See that I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that had been made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that had been done. And God rested on the seventh day from all the work that had been done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that God had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just A few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard 
holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began. Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son, whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up. All of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship. Within God, and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the Spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God, with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit, closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God is creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion 
and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd. The breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity, and equity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask that the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country, but we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God, with creation, with us, and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen.
We confess together our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered into the mystery of the Trinity, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, and deacons as they lead the church in these trying times. With all the baptized, may they be strengthened to share the good news of Jesus Christ and in prayer and action strive for peace and justice in all the earth. Strengthen us to be bold in our proclamation. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is is great. God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Instill in us a deeper wonder for the created world you've called good and a greater humility for our place within it. Kindle in us a creative and resilient spirit as we care for the earth and its creatures. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is is great. great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage leaders of this and every land to seek wisdom and respond with courage and compassion to those most in need. We pray for community leaders in this time of unrest, especially our Governor Jay Inslee, Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin, and Police Chief Carmen Best, the mayors and police chiefs of neighboring areas and all in decision-making positions. Further the work of advocates who pursue justice in often ignored communities, like Chief Seattle, whom we commemorate today. Shine your love on those whose only companion is hate. Hear us, O God. Your mercy mercy is is great. great. God of creativity, you created in us your image. We are your beloved children. May we recognize your likeness in one another. We pray for all mourning the death of your beloved child, George Floyd. Hold in your loving embrace all experiencing trauma, fear, uncertainty, and loss. Protect vulnerable children and adults from violence or neglect. Provide what is needed for those lacking access to food, shelter, and other services. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of healing, you accompany us in sickness and suffering. Bring relief to all afflicted with the coronavirus and all those isolated now more than ever. 
especially those in prison or care facilities. Strengthen caregivers, health workers, and all those whose work ensures the safety and well-being of others. Grant assurance to those who are anxious and strength to those who are tired. Console, heal, and nourish all in need this day, especially these we name before you now. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. God of connection, you call us to make your presence known. Accompany people of faith as we nurture relationships in new ways, where the sin of racism fractures our relationships, bring repentance and reconciliation. Free us for the difficult work ahead in our congregations and communities. Open our hearts for attentive healing so that our places of connection are filled with your spirit. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints of all times and in our lives. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Receive these prayers, O God, and all those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, 
source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven. The hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and testing, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. And now receive this blessing. The Holy One, the Holy Three, Increase your hope, strengthen your faith, deepen your love, and grant you peace. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.